Okay, folks, we're going to do a little bit of a basing here. Uh, we've, uh, this is my gallo glass project, and um, these are the three stands of the gallo glass that I've based so far. They already have the basing material on them, and I put the first coat, which is all over them, with this chocolate brown from Vallejo. So that's, uh, I did that, um, Uh, it wasn't yesterday because we did some filming, but it was the day before. And hopefully we can get them done tonight. Okay, so the other two colors I use for this temperate basing. Oh, that's the one. Let's see if we can find it here. Oh. U.S. Field Drab. This is the second coat. And the last one's Iraqi Sand. Let's make sure we get the right shade in here. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a uh, dry brushing, painting, okay? And uh, we're gonna do those two shades. Then after that, we can go into the flocking and the tufts and so forth, so. All right, so let's take these three stands, put this away. Let's, uh, let's get everything in order here. Now, so we're going to do some kind of dry brushing. Let's go ahead and get one. It's kind of ruined already. Okay. And let's make sure we get a brush that is not going to get any more destroyed than it already is. Unfortunately, there's a lot of really tight crevices in there, but um, I think that one should be fine. Normally, I would not stagger the figures in here. Since these guys are all, uh, then we're gonna to have to um, you know what? Let's take a look at this. Let's let's take a look at this uh, with the brown color, and make sure that there's not something that popped. Because when I'm painting the base of these figures, uh, one thing I do is I add some water to. Um, is it still alive here? I add some water to the um, to the paint so it'll flow a little more. Um, and unfortunately, one of the side effects of that is that it's got little bubbles in the pop. No big deal. But uh, let's make sure there's none of that showing all the way at the bottom. Now, this is... Let's get this out of the way here. There we go. Let's make sure that we don't have anything... Okay. Because the other thing is if you've got a, a dark crevice, it would normally be the darkest thing. And if you end up doing that and it pops, now you have no paint on the darkest thing, which makes no sense. Okay, so that's, that's it. This one didn't require very much. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, these are kind of all stacked in each other's business, so um, I suspect that this would be more likely to happen on these than some of the other ones, but let's just make sure we don't have... Uh... any of that.
so that wasn't very much. This mid shade here is the US field drab. Let's go ahead, we're gonna put some of this here and then we'll off the excess. All right, make sure this is dry here. I think I've gotten my money's worth out of that uh, piece of paper towel. All right, um, all right. And we're just gonna come in here, dry brush what I use. I don't use a dry brush, dry brush, so i um, giving them a great. See, I want it a little wet just so you can uh, work with it a little bit more. And unfortunately, the proximity of all these figures to each other I'm going to have to go in there with a smaller brush when I'm done with this one and go in and get some of that detail, which is something I have not had to do with other figures, other stands. It's not really the figures themselves. So, Because I don't want to get too close to this brushed up on the leg. It's not like I'm doing like say weathering on like a vehicle or something like that where that would be appropriate. So you'd be a little bit careful. And that's why this process takes a lot longer than you would think. It's like, oh, you just gotta, you just have to base three figures and dry brush them and put some flock on them. Oh, piece of cake, right? You'll be done in 30 minutes. No, no, no. I mean, if you want to have a problem, you know, have an accident or something like that, 30 minutes, but otherwise it's, uh, it's going to take a while. Okay, so he's done from the standpoint of, I'm going to have to go in there with a smaller brush and get in there. Okay, I'm not going to use this one. I got to use something more um, discreet. I can't seem to get this light where I want it. I'm either bumping my head into it or... Okay. We are going to dry brush some on this rock okay so that way the color of i mean it's the rock's not painted at all this is the natural granite color the rock comes in okay and uh, like i mentioned earlier these, this is actual granite so hey it'll make the stands way even more perfect right have some heft to them i don't like uh i don't like really light stands i want them to have uh some meat so we're going to dry brush them on top of them so that it looks like it's going to tie in these rocks into the terrain a little bit more. You don't want them just sitting here on top of it like, you know, that they got placed after. And there's going to be one more, one more after this, okay? Hey there, Todd. Hello, man. No DBA rules here yet. Still awaiting my delivery. Well, they should be there. Uh, it's going to take about a week, plus um, whatever this nonsense of this time we're living in adds to it. 
Speaking of nonsense of the time we're living in, so I yesterday was three weeks that I placed an order for the mounted debt for this army. It's from a supplier I'd never used before, but um, yeah, I just asked for like an update. I mean, I understand that they were like their shipping times were slow because of this COVID, but um, I didn't expect it like not be shipped yet. I mean, it's been three weeks. I wish it would just contact me, but um, I don't know. Well, I guess I'll just have to find something else to, to work on. Um, well, you know, here's the example, okay? Uh, these guys, this, these figures are done. There would be, uh, I'd probably build them all as light horse. That's six mounted figures I need to paint. And then the army's playable. And not only one of the versions, just one of the versions, but at least it's playable. And, uh, you know, I could potentially, like, play it next week, right? When we get together and play our games. But, um, since I don't have the mounted, then, uh, you know, I've just got to go on to other things. So I've got these Scots over here, uh, just hanging out here. I did a, I replaced their pikes the other day. Uh, and, um, but they basically take the place in the army, the same thing as, as these blades. So if I use these two stands of, of, of Scots, they come out of two of the three stands of blades. So it doesn't help me from the standpoint of, you know, getting the army complete. It's just another version I can do of them. So, um, and I also found out I didn't have this, the, the nightstand for the Scots. That was another thing I could do is I could paint the nightstand. Well, I didn't have a, you know, I've got freaking 80 pounds of lead in 15 millimeter. I'm kidding. It's that it's 80 pounds. It's probably 120. <laughs> and, and I didn't have any nights that, uh, would be appropriate for this. So, um, and, um, you know, whenever they come in, we'll do that. So, yeah, I thought I had the Knights, but it's, I have a bunch of hundred years war Knights. So only reason I haven't done those armies is they're just, I've seen lots of other people that have, um, that have hundred years war armies. So when I see an army that lots of people have, if I'm not building them for a specific reason, like the reason I have my Romans, my Polybian and my Marian Romans is we were going to do an event at one of the Historicons a long time ago and everybody needed to have one of those armies. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll build one of these. But I wouldn't have built... Why are you slipping, dude? Why you got to be doing like that? Um, <laughs> uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have built any of those armies because everybody has them. You know, you have seen... You know, it's like a New Kingdom Egyptian army. I'll probably never build an... I know I'll never build a New Kingdom Egyptian army. Because uh, it's a very popular army. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a great army. Uh, and they look cool, too. But everybody has them. Um, the people I game with... Um, Scott have them? I think Scott has, to do, has them to do. Mitch has an army of them. And Luke has an army of them. So, like, why the hell would I build them? You know? Um... Not that there's anything wrong with them. I think they're a pretty good army. But I tend to go for things that someone in our group doesn't already have. It just makes more sense. Unless it's something I'm dying to do. Um, like Mitch ended up buying Normans. And the Italian Normans were on my list to do. I may get to them one day. But they just kind of got moved down the queue. So... Um, but yeah, if you could if you could build something that your your group doesn't have, um, why not? Right, it benefits everybody. You guys can see uh, some, a different kind of army. But um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the mounted. So maybe the guy's in a hospital or something like that that does the casting. I wish somebody would just tell me, hey, listen, they haven't started on them or have you? Did I just grab the guy I already did? Yeah, what about this guy? It tells you how subtle the colors are. Did we just do all three and I didn't notice? I guess so. Oh, all right. Let's let's uh, let's put this away and go to a smaller brush. Okay. And we'll bring this brush out again when we do the third, the third layer. Now, why did I pick these three colors? Well, to be honest with you, uh, I, went, I don't play Flames of War, but play, Flames of War has some really good ideas on there. And it wasn't that I needed to grab one of their colors. It's that... It showed someone doing like uh, 
uh, examples of their basing. And they said, I used these three colors and this is what it looked like. So I could see what the base looked like before I went and did a test thing. And uh, this was, these three colors, I believe were one of them. The, my desert one, certainly one of them. And I love how it turned out. So um, there's, uh, they have a lot of really good resources. I mean, I don't play Flames of War, but, um, or have any intention to, but they've got, um, you know, for terrain and stuff, it allows you to see what things look like, you know, the, especially if you're doing three colors, one on top of each other like that, you don't want to like do a whole bunch and then realize, oh, this makes the figures look green, you know, and that's not the look you want. So, all right, so we're done with this brush. Let's go with a smaller one and let's see if I can find a smaller one that I don't love the condition it's in. And this may be our candidate right here. This may just be it. So, yeah, I wanted to uh, I wanted to do this this morning, but I had to uh, finish doing the upload of the video that uh, we shot last night. So if you guys haven't seen that, go check it out. Um, we uh, had four players, and we still managed to film six battles. That means everybody got to play everybody, um, and it was like two and a half hours. So I think that's like a record for us. We were able to play six games in two and a half hours, and we weren't really rushing. Um, <clears throat> some of us got our butts kicked so bad that uh, it might have been over sooner than I would have expected. But, you know, hey, sometimes the dice don't want to work for you. But, uh, but nonetheless, it's pretty cool. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. But you guys already know that that video is out if you were subscribed. So please subscribe. I know that a lot of people um, actually I found out something interesting. Um, I, I deduced something interesting. Um, with um, with the whole subscribing thing is a lot of people can't figure out how to do it. So it made me realize a lot of people are watching YouTube and they're not signed in. So like they don't, I just can't imagine not being signed into YouTube because uh, that way, you know, you can keep track of what you've watched and what have you. I mean, obviously you have to be signed in if you, you have a channel like this, but um, you know, most people don't have channels and that makes sense. I didn't have one for for many, many years. Uh, I've had the channel, what, for like three years now? Two, three years, something like that. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are surfing on uh, YouTube watching videos and they're not signed in. So um, that, was kind of a, that was kind of a surprise to me. And I'm already breaking my own rule because I'm already moving on to the next color. But that's okay, this is excruciatingly for, forgiving. Okay, we're gonna go in, we're gonna stay with this color. Pay attention, Tony. See, I told you I was a terrible multitasker. I'm already putting other paint down here and everything. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, I guess a lot of people are out there watching videos and they're not signed in. That's the only thing that makes sense, you know, but I don't know. And subscribing is no cost to you, okay? Um, it is... Um, People think, oh, well, I gotta pay you a certain amount of money. You don't have to do anything. What subscribing does is it tells, as far as I can surmise, it tells YouTube, hey, there's this many people that are interested in the material that you have on the channel. So it kind of prorates how easy it is to upload videos and the visibility and that kind of stuff. So uh, if you wanna support the channel, subscribing is the best thing you could do. You know, uh, I, think, I think subscribing is more important than liking videos, you know? Uh, maybe they're both important, but um, yeah, subscribing definitely is um, important. So I wasn't able to do this live stuff until I had 1,000 subscribers. So, um, so anyhow, we're slightly over 1,000, so I can't piss off too many of you guys, and then uh, I'll drop under 1,000. <laughs> oh, that's not my intention on here. I'm not interested in pissing people off, nor getting into arguments, so. Unfortunately, we had to do a moderate comment thing and it actually had a backup, it had a backup effect that I, a bonus effect that I didn't know. So I had to start putting moderating comments, all kinds of questions about the rules, and then it was taking me, you know, they might ask me at the, just when I go into work, and it's like eight hours before I can answer the question. 
So meanwhile, that was generating other questions and other turmoil. And I'm like, okay, well, we got to moderate the comments so that I can look at the comment and answer your rule very shortly after it's posted. The added benefit it have is I didn't realize there would be like these random spammers trying to, you know, like uh, sending links to, you know, nudie sites. So I haven't gotten that many, but it's been, you know, seven or eight. I don't want all that nonsense stuff on your um um, but I do uh, read all the comments, so. Um, so that's the reason they're moderated. And, uh, you know, and I've seen, other, I've seen other sites. I mean, I subscribe to a lot of other people. And I've seen other sites where they're not moderated and they're just, people start all kinds of pissing matches on there. It's like, yeah, that just kind of sets a bad tone. So, you know, there are people out there that, uh, you know, believe it or not, have nothing better to do than to cause problems and, you know. A hobby, this hobby, everything should be positive. If you're not, if you don't grab a positive experience every time you're 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 doing that, whatever hobby you is, you whatever hobby you is, whatever hobby you're doing, then you need to find a different hobby because that's just you know. On a tangent about, uh, I need to start doing like a Tony's therapy hour. Then I guess too. <laughs> what do you think, Todd? I should do that. <laughs> Now, sometimes, you know, just where, um, it was about a month ago, when I was doing the, the, the cloth for my uh, carriage guys, that I was talking about how you could take the core color and mix it with black, or mix it with a dark brown, or mix it with uh, a medium brown and get totally different colors. And I knew that, but, having, but just making the video and verbalizing what I was doing benefited me. So, you know. Um, this is my own form of therapy, I guess. All right, let's see who's falling asleep. Oh, everybody. Okay, cool. <laughs> I know you will. So, um, just, uh, watch some of my videos and, um, I know you read well and, uh, just you wait. Nothing's, they're, they're written well. The problem is, is nothing's repeated a second time. I don't know what the intention of that is, but that's that just seems like a whole lot of work. But they're excellent. We had a lot of fun last night. Yeah, so like I said, this is kind of a slow process. I mean, you would think I'd be done in like no time. Um, I gotta go pick up the daughter and Maybe an hour. I don't think I'll have. I don't think I have these stands done. But you know, they'll get done when they get done. It's not like I'm going to work on something else before this. Like I'm gonna, not going to stop and work on something different. So. Now, if something were to happen and you accidentally boogered it up and got some of this paint on your figure, you know, it's, you could probably like take the same brush and add some water to it and lightly scrub it and, and you get it off because uh, the figures are sealed. So it's not saying you may not scuff up the figures, but uh, you're much more likely to scuff up what, the, what, you, what you messed up than the figures themselves. Okay, so I think we're done with that one. And this is the original one that we were done with, so we'll come to this one. All right. Yeah, so the whole reason of not knowing what state status my castings are in, now I'm checking the mail every freaking day. You know, because I mean, they could already be in the mail, you know. And because uh, we're going to do an unboxing on them when they come in. But um, but anyways, yesterday I ordered the Knights. I ordered them from a different manufacturer, not because of this little situation going on with this one, but the manufacturer made for uh, the correct Knights for this period. And, I, you know, you guys watch my stuff, you know, you, you know that I use all kinds of different manufacturers together. I, I like that uh, inconsistent look to troops. Unless you're doing something like Roman Legionnaires or something like that, where they specifically were outfitted a certain way. 
And I wouldn't mind so much if they were like different sizes and heft dials too. So, you know, you don't want to, let me use an extreme example. You don't want to use Peter Pig Roman Imperial, uh, early Imperial Roman Legionnaires with uh, Old Glory. It's just going to be a big size difference. The so Peter Pigs are, are, are small. So... Okay, let's go to this last shade, which I, of course, was an idiot and pulled it out ahead of time, but now it's there on the, uh, on there, that Iraqi sand. Okay. today. I've never had that problem before. I wonder if it's a different size magnet. I wonder if it's not heavy duty ones that are on there. No, they look the same. Okay. Strange. And something different happens that's out of the ordinary. It really like makes you wonder. Hey, why is this happening now? There hasn't been an issue every time. Why is this happening now? Okay, and we're going to go in there with a small detail brush and really um, and get in there and do some highlighting because this is the last step okay so there's not going to be any more highlighting after this and i'll show you what i do with that so all right let's go back to these guys here get some more of this We're just going to have to avoid these areas in between the figure at this point. We'll get them in this in this very last stage, which the, which we'll do with the same color.
But yeah, that really helps. That Flames of War site is, is, is pretty good because um, it gives you ideas of what these three colors are going to look like and how much, because you want them to be different enough, but you want them to complement each other. So you don't put three layers of brown to try to make the ground coverage. And then the next thing you know, it has a very gray look because of the browns that you used. So it's just something to, to take a look at. Uh, I think I actually did do before I even, even though I looked at it online and saw somebody that used this as an example, I took a little test bed. I had done a little small stand like this and covered up with this material and then picked the colors I was going to use and dry brush it and, and then realized, yeah, it looks pretty darn good. I'm, at least I'm happy with how, how it looks. So I kind of ran with it. So, um, yeah, I was pretty happy with that. The whole point is you don't want to paint, you don't want to base the entire army and then realize, ah, oh, crap, I don't like how they look. Or they make my figures look a certain way that that's not the look that I was looking for. So, um, So I got a comment from somebody today that said they they really like our gameplay videos more than the than the painting. Well, the thing is, is the painting I can do every night. The gameplay I can only do when all our schedules line up, and um, you know, I mean, I could probably do one of these every day, and this these are helping me, you know. So, uh, you know, you don't have to. I put, some, you know, that's all cool. Uh, I enjoy these. I enjoy doing these a lot more because um, I'm at home, uh, showered after work, and 73 degree weather with a fan going on. So yeah, the temperature is really nice. It's not freaking 95 with no fan going on. So because uh, because they'll come up on video. So it's a hell of a lot more comfortable to do these. Let's put it that way. But you'll still get uh, one of the gamey ones. Uh, about one once a week so um we get together once a week and do those so maybe could push it to two a week once we get some cooler weather but i'm outside quite a bit in my job so the last thing i want to do when i'm not getting paid is um is be in a hot environment so um i've had enough of that monday through friday so Okay, now we're gonna go in, right? We've done all we've done all three. Make sure I didn't screw up again. Well it doesn't look like I did this one. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we're gonna go in and um I'm gonna go in and get a smaller brush. We do the same one. No, it's got too many of the fluffs coming out. Those are too good. What about over here? I'm not ready to ruin those yet. No. This one will work. Definitely want to get one that's seen better days. Because as soon as you end up running it over this, uh, I mean, this is kind of abrasive, you know, this uh, this material here. So we're going to take this last shade here and uh, we're going to water it down some. And then we're 
we're going to get in, go in. We don't want a whole lot of paint in here. We want to go and say between the legs here. Let's paint that. And kind of give it like a light wash. But all we're doing is, is so that this color that's in between the legs that's of the darkest shade gets lightened up some. Because I can't go in and dry brush that or I'll end up getting it all over the shoes. Okay. So that's really the only purpose. And if you see something else that I missed, you go in there, you know, you go in there and you take care of that as well. But And again, if you find an area that's really obstinate, like you just can't get it looking like you want it to, that's where you end up putting some of that static grass. Okay? You cover that all up, nobody knows. Because you don't want your eye to go directly to that. What I found is by doing these figures staggered, it's more of an on more than getting your brush into where you need to. I can pretty much get into anywhere I need to get into. The problem is, is you know you're getting into places that are around their legs and they're casting you sometimes see exactly how it's turning out. So this guy's completely done. Well, I mean, obviously we don't have the tuft and so forth. All right, so let's go to this one. Look, I'm holding with my hands. I still don't have any paint on me. <laughs> it's not, it's not so much that you get paint on yourself. It's more that you could end up transferring it to something else where you don't want the paint on. And then you got a problem. Then you got to clean up on aisle four type situation. So, uh, Australian Greg, hi Tony, just saw your notification. And I thought I'd say hello. Once it's up, I'll check it out then. Yes. You are like the busiest person that has nothing to do. Cause you're like on, re you're on retirement of like on three or some three years now or something like that. So. An early retirement because you're pretty young to be. You couldn't be retired at your age in this country. You must have played your cards right. <laughs> or put up with a lot of hand. Yeah, you probably already saw the video then. You said you were you were watching the, the game last night, so that uh, we played last night earlier. So you're on like the opposite schedule. So this is like your morning uh, out in Australia. Not only is it your morning, it's your winter time. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Yeah, you had snow or something the other day. You had posted pictures. That pissed me. That's a good way to piss me off. <laughs> uh, I don't necessarily want snow, but man, this weather is just, it's killing me. You're supposed to, as you get older, I hear you're cold all the time. I'm not. I'm like more like heat sensitive. I don't want to deal with the heat more as I get older, so... Um, maybe Florida isn't the best place to live. <laughs> it is as long as you're wet. Uh, if you're at the beach or last weekend we did some uh, scalloping and it was, I was wet the whole, all day long and I wasn't hot at all. And I was in, I don't know, close to 100 degree weather, I guess. Yep, so finishing up these guys. This is the, we're gonna do the edging of these figures in black. I happen to like black. I like that they look like a gaming piece. I think it makes the terrain stand out a little bit more from them. Um, and uh, you wanna make sure that's dry before you do any of the, of the flocking because you don't want that flock to stick to the outside of the paint um, on, on the edges. That would just look like a, like a big mistake, so. Um, Got another, what we got here? I got to put my glasses on to read the comments. Uh, eight years retired. Oh, okay. I was off by half the amount and turning 66 yes, birth, next birthday. Yes, I saw the games and I'm very happy to piss you off. <laughs> so you're able to re retire at 58. Holy shit. Well, that's, that's in Australian years, right? So, you know, you're really like uh, 83, right? By American years. No, good for you. Um, 
and it's fine to have things to do when you're retired. What I don't get is these people that retire, they, they, they say, and I've met several of them, and uh, they say, well, you know, I'm getting ready to retire, and when I retire, I'm going to have more time to do whatever it is that you're doing, right? So they'll say, like, for instance, well, I can't come to this con because I'm, I'm working, but when I'm retired, I'll be able to come to all of them. Well, this year is not a good example, okay, because there's no conventions. But, um, you know, they've retired before this year, and that hasn't been the case. It's like, oh, all of a sudden they don't have any money. So it's like, um, when I retire, I'm going to have at least as much time to do this then as I do now. Or you're doing something wrong. So, uh, unless I don't do this anymore, which is really unlikely. Um, because this is therapy, but I mean, if you've got a couple hours a day to devote to this now, why wouldn't you have a couple hours a day to devote to it when you're retired? You know, I don't get it. But, you know, I guess teach his own. But yeah, I've seen several people that uh, retired and it disappeared. Never saw them again. So, and no, they didn't pass away. <laughs> All right, these two guys are done. Last, last guy over here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 56, that's young. All right. Yeah, and you, and you travel too. Because it's not like you're sitting at home not doing anything. You're going places. It's not like, well, like I'm retired, but i got to live in this jail cell. Well, what's the good in that? Yeah. doing pretty good on time let's just keep plugging along these guys will be done before I go to bed it's just a matter of can we get him on a video okay. got to get him between the legs over here we've got a totally dark spot none of the dry brushing went in we don't want we don't want that we don't want that and like I said, if it's an area that you just can't seem to get right, then make sure that's the part where you put the PVA in and you put the, uh, the static grass and nobody will be any wiser. So PVA is your, um, the, and static grass is your last chance to, to fix something that's been boogered up. Okay, I think we're about done. I think we're about done with this. All right, let's quickly uh, let's get our uh, high quality black paint that I use. Joking. I've been using this folk art. Okay, and this is uh, licorice. This is a cheap uh, cheap paint here. So. We won't even use this wet palette. Is next time you see this thing, it's going to have. Uh, See, we'll call this one uh, Ode to a Kern. Uh, send that to the museum. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I could paint art that didn't look like anything. It's, I, don't, I don't think I've got that in me. I like impressionistic type stuff, but just modern crazy stuff. Yeah, it's, that's not me. That is not me. Okay. And this is the handy part about having one of these because I can, like, let's say I'm painting this edge. So you just stick the edge out past it, and then when you move to the other one, you just rotate it. Okay? So you don't uh, have that issue. Now, let's see if we can find. Let's not, um, let's not do this like I did earlier and drop the big booger right here. Of paint. Let's just use it on one of our little samples here. And get this now. If I do get paint, I know you guys are going to get excited if I get paint on me, you know, because you guys are weird like that. But um, 
if I do get paid on me, it would be doing this because this thing is McSloppy. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and cut. None, yes. All right, now we wanna get a brush. Interesting enough, um, a brush that's square, I'm probably stating the obvious, you guys already know this, but a square edge brush is not what you wanna to use to paint stuff like this. They don't work worth a damn, in my opinion. So, which is not what I would have thought. So let's just grab, uh, let's grab this one. Let's not get one that's too small, because otherwise I'll be here forever. All right, let's paint this guy. Let's paint these guys up. Let's do the edge. Let's get this a little closer to myself. And okay, that's done. Rotate and stick out a little bit. That way, I'm not painting over this thing and getting it everywhere. moisture on there to get this to apply correctly. Next. And I do use these craft paints for like terrain and stuff. I don't use them for my regular painting because they have a lot of, um, they tend to not have a, a great quality in my opinion for the paint sticking on there. They can rub off easy. And um, the other thing is that they are very, very, very flat. I understand because they, have, they don't have a lot of uh, tint. They've got a lot of filler. So it makes it really, Hello, why are you moving on me? Let's try this side. I don't know why this thing's being incorrigible. Um, they have a lot of... Um, they have a lot of... Um, filler in them, which makes them... Um, very flat, and that's good because I don't lose on them, and I don't want to have to go back and seal them either. Okay, I seal and varnish everything, but that's it stops with the figure. I don't go back and and varnish or seal anything with the um, with the ground coverage or anything like that. So, You want to make sure you don't go up over the side. So you don't get this black on the top. Okay, they're done. Last one. To get some motivation, a motivational drink here. Also known as cold coffee. Black.
Last edge here. We're going to rinse this uh, crappy brush. And let's go get our terrain stuff out and get that picked out. Okay. We may end up using this this crappy brush here in a little bit to put to apply PVA. Let's just get that out of the way. And I know I'm gonna need my tray. So let's grab that. This is why I shake my, uh, I shake the uh, static grass on. I got some two tufts left from the other day, so we'll make sure to use those. All right, and let's go grab the tuftage. Let's see where they're at. All right, we got three stands. It's uh, this is one of each, but not this kind. All right, so let's do. Let's we'll take two of those, and these are the Army Painter. This in particular is called Lowland Tough Shrubs, okay? And um, this is also the Army Painter. Okay, uh, three stands, so... We're gonna to have to cut some of these down because they don't have a lot of space on the stand. So, and then the last one is gamer's grass. Autumn. Picked this up at Storicon uh, last year. Okay, I think that's enough to work with here. Okay, let's put those guys away. Elmers, what is it they call it across the pond? PVA. It's funny, it doesn't say poly piney polyvinyl acrylator, whatever that PVA stands for anywhere on here. It's just Elmer's glue all here in the States. We're simpler people. <laughs> yeah. Screw science, it's just Elmer's. <laughs> Okay, all right. So now the, the catch is gonna be, I may not be able to do the next step, step because the edge of the stand is wet. Now, I don't wanna leave the painting the edge of the stand until the very end because what will happen is there's gonna be some of the static grass and I don't wanna accidentally like paint, paint one in and it's stuck inside of the, of the, uh, of the paint that's going along the edge and uh, there's like some roadkill there. You don't want to paint over the roadkill. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is, this is the, last, the last final stages. Let's have you guys take a look at them here. Are they, they wet enough to, are we gonna get some? Ah, I look like crap all washed out and stuff in this light. I don't know why, I assure you this light looks really good in person, but it looks very washed out on the screen. So I guess if you were doing some kind of uh, really rough terrain or whatever, you could probably go with just like this and not put any grass at all. But this is exactly the same look as these guys have. So, um, anyhow. Are we good to go? Do we have a green light? I think we got a green light. I think we got a green light. I'm pretty patient, but I'm not patient when it comes to things that have drying time. Like, uh, you know, the clear coats or whatever. You wait 24 hours before applying it. Screw that. After two hours or, or an hour and a half or maybe even an hour, I'm done to put the next coat on there. I don't have time for that. I got things to paint.
All right, so let's go ahead before we uh, let's take our exacto knife here and do something I got to do anyways, and that's cut some of these tufts down to size because what happens is is this ha but this stand is so cluttered because of how the figures are staggered that uh, I'm going to need to get smaller uh, smaller pieces in there, and we're also going to need to get Mr. Tweezer out. Right, Mr. Tweezer here. Let's come in and um, let's take these shrubs here. Let's cut these guys in half. Okay. And yeah, I'm going to take one of these and cut it in half again. Let's cut one of them in half. Okay. All right. So let's move these guys over here. All right. Uh, what else we got? These little guys are small. Um, we're going to leave them. Let's cut one. I don't think I've ever cut one of these in half or part of it. Let's see what, let's see what we're dealing with. Okay. And then these guys. It's very minimal, very, very minimal. So we'll leave one of these big and uh, let's cut another one of these in half. I just don't have a lot of space to work here on these stands, so. Okay. All right, we got enough different things going on there. We'll leave these two as reserve in case I need to use them. But we're gonna put the we're gonna do the uh, the static grass first. Then we'll come in and do the tufts. Hey Joe. Uh, hopefully you're doing some painting too. The grindstone is a grinding. Nearly. These guys are done, and uh, you know might have a surprise for you on something else tonight so we'll see um yeah this would be the uh seventh eighth ninth stand in the army so of course this is an extremely light army so that doesn't mean anything uh but yeah, I actually went back and did a count. I got these guys, these 12 guys were done in six days. That's two figures a day for a week. That's, I didn't let myself get distracted by other things. All right, so let's, um, we're gonna take some PVA, lay Elmer's, and let's put it on, um, let's put it on one of these things, like one of these that I use to mix the epoxy up, because I don't want it here where it's gonna get catch with something else. And let's just squeeze them out. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this stuff's cheap and actually takes me a long time to use one of them. Uh, usually somebody else comes and borrows it and then that's how I run out of it. <laughs> it's not on my own. Uh, okay, so let's grab, let's take the, let's take tough lands. Let's take the tough lands and move them over here. Okay. All right, let's grab this and let's look for places that we wouldn't mind putting the sand, the, uh, the static grass out. Okay. So let's put some here. It's living around that rock and then some here. Pretty good here. We definitely want to get some back in here where it was hard to reach to begin with.
Okay, that's that's all we're gonna do for the grass on this guy. Okay, and I'm probably, let's just do all the gluing first and then we'll come back and do all the static grassing. All right. Um, Let's see what else we don't like. That's usually what I do. What are the some of the places that didn't, came out less than stellar? And that's where we're gonna put this stuff down. Okay. And then this one. Okay, now once we're done with this, which I think we're done with that, we'll still come back to that because we're going to need that for the tufts. Okay. We're going to uh, mix this stuff up because it does settle a little bit. Okay. Just going to take them and pray to God nothing's wet. I could go in and push little parts of the clump, but it's just too difficult to get in between the figures right now. All right, so we're going to come back to this in a second. Let's come over here and do the same thing with this one. Yeah, and I probably, I did, probably did something different that I've never done before. And that is, I think I probably did the Elmer's one at a time and then did it. So this one, which I painted, which I did last, came out the best. That's no big deal. We're just gonna retrofit this. I just didn't wanna stop and, and, and touch that. Let's see, this one look okay? Yeah, this, if I shake these guys, I shake them over the Yeah, it didn't stick. Didn't stick. All right. No biggie. I knew there was going to have to be some kind of uh, uh, adversity today. <laughs> no biggie. Stuff just dried out really quick. Wasn't enough there to 
All right, now we'll use this one here. Do this off camera because it's a little bit less uh, chaotic over on this side. Yeah, so all we're gonna do is we'll put a lot on here and then we're gonna tap this stuff off. You don't need a whole lot on there. And any of this extra that, that comes off, we'll just end up brushing it and, and putting it back in the container, so. Uh, and where's the last one? This one here. Okay. One of the toughs in here of the mixture of colors is damn near bright red. And when it's not tough by itself, it looks out of place. But if it's mixed in with everything else, it's good. Okay. All right, so we have that. Now let's go get some uh, some tough action on. Now let's, uh, let's clean all this up. So this is how much we had left over. So we're just gonna take a brush and we're just going to brush this down. And yes, you're always going to waste some. It's all right. And someone's also going to, if you move out of your house, I'm sure someone will find this stuff left over. You know, you can vacuum all you want, and it's still going to look like a murder scene from uh, for three year, for uh, for 30 years afterwards. So. Okay. That part's done. Let's just put the lid on this. Forget I got it all over me. Oh well. Yeah, like I said, you'll find this uh, somewhere else. Okay. Um, right. Tough time. Yeah. Da, 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 da. John Peter, finally watching your six-game marathon. Excellent. If I'm reflocking bases, I wet the base down with water. Then I paint. Then I paint. I use to hold down the flock will bleed into the hard to reach area without lumping or up in the open areas. Okay. Well, I'm too old to change my weight, so this is what I'm going to go with. <laughs> I just didn't remember if I, I if I, uh, I think probably because I'm videoing and I wanted to do uh, all at once, but I bet in the past I've done one and then done the other one. So, all right. So let's look at uh, one of these has typically left a big open spot. So that big open spot is going to be is going to be a one of these that's completely that's completely open. So we're going to come in here. We're going to put it down and It's good to go. You want to make sure it's all the way down so it doesn't look like um, it doesn't look like a, a carpet that's just been flopped on some rocks. Best way to describe it. Place. Okay, so that one looks good. All right, so let's uh, we got a bush over here. Let's. Um, Get rid of that guy. Okay, so we got like a little bush here. Let's see. I 
probably be all right there. Just come in here. Must have had a part I didn't see. Overkill. You never had that happen before. Let's see. It's because I rolled so bad last night, it's carried over to today. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, those bastards are going to pay. <laughs> okay, so that's there. All right. Uh, let's take one of these. This is another small one. And we're going to put it over here next to this little rock. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna put another one in front of this guy's feet because it seems kind of lacking there. We'll use another one of these halfsies. Okay, so he's done. Don't poke me. That's why you, uh, that's why you uh, file those down. So you're, before you give yourself a blood transfusion. Okay, so right. So this has got limited area here. So let's see if we can find... This one should be okay there. Not really any rhyme or reason, just, uh, you know, like on this stand, there was this kind of a tuft on that side, so I didn't want the same kind over there as well. i mix it up. Problem I'm having is there's something on the edge of this tweezer that's wanting to glue down on something stickyish. I wonder what it is. It's just uh, this is probably from picking out the paint on the uh, Citadel bottles. Now, all right, this guy goes here. Okay, uh, what do we got here? We got uh, we got a one of these swamp tufts. You got somewhere big to put it? Put it back here behind him. Let's do that. Okay. And um, maybe this little guy right here. Okay, that one's done. Let's see. Games Workshop makes some interesting basing paints. Some can recreate that cracked desert look, other snow. Yeah, um, the hobby store here, or the game shop, because they don't have them in hobby stores. The game shop here, is always out of everything. They have a do a terrible job of restocking. So, um, 
they never have that stuff. I've seen one of them. I think they're like pre-colored. Um, yeah, I think that those, uh, you know, that might work for somebody. I, I think I'm past the point of no, I'm past the point of no return with uh, using this product because um, I don't know. I've gotten com pretty comfortable with it, but that does look interesting. They do have some cracked earth and stuff like that. I wanted to go pick up one of them one time, and they were like out of it just to try it on something else. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I won't get it then, you know? I've got a big glove of almost. Why did that happen? You guys are making me nervous. I'm kidding. More of a time crunch than anything else. I'm gonna leave uh, here shortly. I want to get this done because that way they'll dry and we can take some pictures of these guys and maybe even have maybe even have a surprise. Put these two next to each other. Okay. What do we got over here? This is just asking to have something like this grow out of it. Okay, let's see what we got now. Let's go. Let's move this so we don't have a fiasco on our hands. Okay, and there you have it. That's the gala glass done. We got that and the other six stands of skirmishers for the Irish, so. Yeah. Pretty cool. So anyhow, I'm going to wrap this video up, but we're going to call that a wrap. And uh, we'll try to post in some pictures of these guys. Uh, we get them all together here with the, the background and everything, so. Okay, well, thanks for joining me, and uh, until next time, um, we'll catch you guys later. Happy painting. Uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and uh, for other videos, and um, looks like we'll do some Scott's Pikeman next. Okay, folks, until next time, see ya.